All right, welcome to the higher order differential equations section of this particular course. So far what we have done is we focused our efforts into solving a first order differential equations and we discussed several methods of how we are able to accomplish that, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch gears and focus on the higher order differential equations. Obviously, we, as this goes without saying that this will be a little bit more complicated, right? Mathematically, and this is a mathematics course, so yeah, it, it will matter. So the first thing I want to look at is, uh, let's define some basic things that I touched up on when I started with uh, the first segments. We discussed what a linear equation is, so I want to revisit that and go from there. Here is the, how the differential equation will need to look like for it to be a linear, right? So let me go ahead and write this. plus a1x dy dx plus a0, so that's the left-hand side, is equal to g of x, okay? And now if I have myself um, some conditions such as this, y prime of x0 will be, let's say, y1, and y all the way to the n minus 1 of x0 is equal to y n minus 1. Okay. We discussed this, but I want to do one more um, highlight of this. You do realize that these conditions are specified at the exact same point. So this is called the initial condition. If I use x0 over here, x1, x2, etc., then I will have something called boundary value problem. And I'll, I'll get back to that as well. So right now I want to focus my effort towards the IVP. So this is called an IVP, initial value problem. Okay. So basically, what this also signify over here is uh, I have a solution which goes through x0 comma y0, right, from this equation. And you can see the slope of that particular uh, solution is y1, right, with a slope of y1. We discussed this in the first order of differential equation as well. I'm interested in a solution which is unique and as, as well as exists. Right. So in order for it to be satisfied, for only for IVP, I want to highlight this. For boundary value problems, I'll get back to this. But I'm talking about what I'm going to write next is going to be only applicable for IVP. Right. Uh, so let's go ahead and write this. A solution exists and unique. Okay. So this is two conditions that I need, and there are two uh, conditions that needs to be satisfied to have that. So you can see over here, so these, this, all the way A1. So I'm going to write them as this way, A, I of X. And I'm going to have I from 0, 1, 2, and all the way to the N, plus G of X, which is the right hand side, needs to be continuous in the interval that I decide to have. So it needs to be continuous in this particular interval. And the second one is that the first uh, a n of x should not be 0 for every x in i. Okay. So as long as these two conditions are satisfied, I got myself a nice solution which is unique and as well as it exists. So then the question is what happens if uh, let's say that a n is 0 for some particular uh, point. What does this mean? So what does this mean is, um, I'm going to be a bit vague because now we're starting the higher order differential equation, so it's a huge umbrella of things. But what will happen is the solution may not be unique, that's number one, or solution may not even exist. Okay. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Let's give an example like x squared, y prime, let's say, I don't know, 2x, y prime, prime plus 5y is equal to 2, right? And I have two, uh, well, I'll actually ask you. I'm not going to say what it is. So is this an IVP, initial value problem? It sure is, right? I'm looking at these two points. Both are defined as 0, right? The question is, let's say that I have, I'm have. i interested in the interval from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? So the question is, 
uh, do I have myself a unique solution over here, which obviously exists or not, right? So here's the issue. When I'm looking at this I a n, you know, is this continuous, right? I'm looking at the x squared, 2x, 5, and 2. Yeah, they are continuous, so that part is fine. How about the second condition that needs to be satisfied? a n should not be equal to 0 for every x in interval. In this interval, if you take x squared, right, obviously x squared is 0 when I have myself x is equal to 0, right? And even, even, you don't really need this, but you can even see that this is the same as where I define my initial conditions. So then what this means is I don't have a unique solution, okay? For this particular case due to the, I'm not satisfying the second condition, okay? This was a, you know, brief example to illustrate the point, okay? The next thing is BBP. So rise up. Uh, that's right over here, BBP, which is the boundary value problem. Again, I talked about this in the, the initial stages of this class, but now I want to highlight this uh, a little bit further. So basically, um, if my conditions are specified at different points as opposed to the same point, such as this too, right? Um, you know, I can specify itself, the function obviously, and or I can just specify the derivative of it. It doesn't that doesn't really make a difference. But if I have myself something like this, why? a is equal to y0 and y prime of b is equal to i don't know y1 and you know let's say fourth of this uh, c is equal to y3 whatever right so then you can see that these points are different points they're not the same points okay so for that isn't this is called the boundary value problem from your angle you may think that okay so what is it so it's not a big deal i have my a over here i have a b over here over here it's a and a right so is this a huge difference yes it is because as an example, this only exists for IVPs. I'll talk about what happens to BVP, but the behavior is completely different. So you need to be careful about these things, okay? And the other thing, you, you know this from all your physics uh, classes as well, the number of boundary conditions must equal to the order of equation. So the number of boundary conditions must equal to the order of equation to completely determine the solution, right? You kind of know this. One point I want to highlight is, unlike IVP, a BVP, boundary value problem, can have one, several, or no solutions, okay? Unlike IVP, a BVP can have one, several, I don't think I need a comma here, uh, several or no solutions. It's not as clear as the IVP case. Now let's go ahead and uh, make a differentiation of the equation. I already talked about this before, but uh, let's look at this GX. What happens if GX is zero? And we talked about it. It's called homogeneous, right? You know this. So let me write it over here. Homogeneous. equations well as I said if g of x is equal to 0 then I call this de to be homogeneous okay remember when I'm talking about the exact uh, differential uh, from the previous segment where we were focusing on the solving differential like we talked about something called homogeneous function this is not the same I'm talking about the homogeneous equations, okay? If the gx is zero, this is called the homogeneous equation. So the thing is, I also mentioned this in the previous segments, but if I'm interested in the solution to the non-homogeneous equation, we first go ahead and solve the associated homogeneous equation first. What I wanna highlight is, you know, I wanna mention that basically we are satisfying this condition, okay? I don't wanna, um, you know, keep, uh, you know, investigating whether the solution is unique or not. So what I want to say is if I have a i of x and i is from 1 all the way to the end, they're continuous, okay? My g of x is continuous for non-homogeneous equation. And I have this a n of x is not equal to 0, okay, for every x in the interval that I'm interested in. So if I satisfy these uh, two conditions, then I will have a unique solution, right? So let's, uh, you know, make things even f further simpler by introducing an operator called differential operator. Differential operator. And this differential operator is capital D. It's from calculus. You, again, you know this. Nothing too complicated happening in here. 
dy dx. If I have capital D square, that will be D square Y, DX square. If I have D to the N, right, that will be the end derivative. So this is something that we do know and we use it. Uh, you know, if you took fluid mechanics from me, we do use these, okay? Um, and also I can do one step further than this. I can go ahead and define the nth order differential operator. And I'm gonna call this L, okay? So this L can be this way, a n of x and derivative, right? Plus a n minus one x and minus one derivative and all the way to a one x d plus a zero of x, right? So where's this coming from? L well, let me come to that point quickly. The first thing that I need is this, for the, for, to write this way. Um, you know this. If I multiply a function by a constant number, right, when I take the derivative of it, I can simply take the, uh, the constant also without the derivative, right? No big deal, we know this. Um, and also I need to define another one, which I already know as well, you'll see in a moment. Even in this course, we did this many times. So I, I have a derivative over here taking fx plus jx. I can take the derivative of fx first, then I sum up the derivative of gx the second, okay? dfx plus dg of x, right? So basically these two are needed for me to write this, right? You can see. And if I combine, you know, those two principles, you will be seeing that I'll get like, let's call this L this time around. So I'm getting closer to closer to my whole L operator. If I have fx plus beta of gx will be, by combining these two, I can write this way, alpha of L f of x, right? Plus beta of L g of x, right? So yeah, I can do that, right? Uh, basically, I'm combining these two, and I got myself this. And I, can, I keep going, you can see that I'm going to get this, right? It's the same thing that I'm talking about. Okay, so good. I introduced a differential operator, or rather reminded you the differential operator, and I introduced in a higher order. I can combine things so to look like my equation is shorter than it already it is. Okay, so that there is some motivation there. So now, uh, I will also talk about another uh, property of a linear Okay, I want to underline the word linear here. If I have a linear equation, if I have a nonlinear equation, what I'm going to talk about next doesn't apply. Okay, please be careful about that. Superposition principle. You've done this many times, right? Nothing new happening here. You've done this many times. Um, again, it's only for linear. I want to highlight. So if I have y1, y2, and I have myself y3 and let's go all the way to the end. These are uh, solutions of the linear, right? ODE, right? These are the solutions. Then a linear combination of them, so let's call this y a combination of this this way. If I multiply c1 of y1 plus c2 of y2 plus cn of yn, and the C's are constants, okay? Uh, this will also be a solution, all right, of the, 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 the differential equation. You may be like, uh, I'm not quite sure. Well, let me do, you know, one, one thing. So think about this. Let's say that, start by start, if I have a solution like this, if this is a solution, if when I multiply this by another constant, will I get a solution? Of course, right? You know, you know this, you know this part. So then I, I can do the same thing as you see, um, as these are differential equations, you can see things, so, you know, so I'm talking about that over here, right? So I can just add them up like this, so it's, I'm still talking about the same principle over here, okay? So this is a particular, uh, you know, uh, theorem that we need to know, and, and we do know. So this was the first thing I wanted to highlight. The second thing I want to highlight here is, um, if I have a homogeneous differential equation, what does it mean? The g of x is 0. As you see, the whole thing is multiplied by y, so then y is equal to 0 will be a trivial solution for the homogeneous only, 
Okay, let's write it in here. Order homogeneous only. Okay. 